Good evening. Happy Monday. Welcome to the Trey Olds Radio Show. Thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Trey Olds. Today my special guest is voice actor Mr. Dale Parsons. Thank you and join us in a minute. Okay, my first question to you is how did you become a voice actor? How did you get started in the industry? Well, you know, I always wanted to to be in broadcasting from the time I was a young kid. Um, I can remember when I was oh, five or six years old walking around the house talking into empty toilet paper tubes, <laughs> uh, pretending like I was on the air. And I even, my brother and I built a little radio station in our, uh, in my bedroom mm-hmm. uh, that broadcast right around the neighborhood. And <clears throat> I hung out around radio stations for years and you know, finally, uh, gosh, they let me go on the air one night uh, to read news at a radio station in Newport News, Virginia, when I was in high school, mm-hmm. and uh, that was that was just very cool. <laughs> and it's, it's just something I've always wanted to do. Uh, I've always wanted to be in radio, and and uh, I was I was fortunate to be able to be in radio. And it, was, it treated me very good. I was, I, I was in, had been in broadcasting for I guess fifty years. Mm-hmm. Wow. Are you still in radio? Do you still do radio? Not really. Uh, we live out here in the uh, on the jungle side of Maui in Hana, so there's not really any radio around here. I I do some voiceover work from time to time. I have a little booth down in the. Uh, basement of the house here and i i record some things and 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 do that but haven't done any day-to-day radio in probably oh 10 years yeah when i i've been doing radio for six years then with radio i've started voice acting you know and that's fun but it always comes back to radio for me i love radio i do too i always have uh, there's just something about it that's magical, and you know, I I've been so fortunate to to have a career where I I worked at some really nice radio stations around the country, and I, I got to meet a lot of great people. I got to work with a lot of great people, and I've just been been I've been blessed in that uh, all of that is has has opened up for me over the years. Yeah, my next question to you is. What is the most difficult part, or what is the most challenging part, being a voice actor in the industry to you? What do you find personally is the most challenging? Well, when I was when I was in New York, I did a lot of. Um, I had a really good agent. I, I got a lot of uh, jobs, and probably one of the toughest things was for me was was going to auditions uh, because oh, yeah. you know you you just don't. And I would I would go to probably oh five six seven sometimes ten auditions a day, and so it was it was really busy. And some of them you got the, the job, some of them you didn't. Uh, but uh, in fact, I have one. <laughs> there's one story when this was probably oh 1989, I guess 1990. Mm-hmm. I went to an audition. And it was for this new serial that was coming out. And the agency, I did the, uh, uh, the, the, the audition for him. And I did a voice like this, you know, for, for uh, whatever the name of the serial was. And they said, oh, we love that. That's great. And they said, you know, we have a couple of people to, to talk to after this. But, you know, you've got it. You know, we, we're, we're really happy with you. So I, I went back home and I told my wife, I told my agent, my agent said, well, this is going to be a very, very lucrative uh, contract that you get out of this. Mm-hmm. I thought, well, this is great. We'll, we'll make enough money to put the kid through school, mm-hmm. you know, through college when he, when he gets older. And all that weekend we, we, uh, we were celebrating and Monday rolled around and I'm reading in the newspaper that the agency that, that held that account lost it. Oh no! They lost the uh, the account over the weekend, and <laughs> I thought, oh no! So so that was the end of that. I talked to my agent. They said, well, you know, things come, things go. So about um, oh, 
I guess it was probably a month later, I go to another audition, and it's for the same serial. And the a new agency had it. And they, I said, well, what do you want? What kind of delivery do you want? They said, well, you know, we have this tape that was recorded earlier. Uh, we, we're not really supposed to have it, but I'll, I'll play it for you and, and see if you can approximate this. And so they played the tape back, and it's me. <laughs> and and I, I didn't want to mention that it was me because they weren't supposed to have the tape, but I said, well, I think I can do that. <laughs> so I, I did my best impression of myself but somebody else got the job <laughs> there, there was somebody somebody else else out there who sounded more like me than me <laughs> yeah the voice industry has a lot of crazy stories like that <laughs> a lot of auditions oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah 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 but well, what do you what do you like about the voice acting well i just like it because there's so many ranges you can go, you know, you could do characters, narrations, uh, anything, you know, and I like it because for me, you have to rely on your imagination a lot because you're just, right. it's just the voice, you know, and I've Same mostly, voice. yeah, I've mostly done. What, 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 what do you normally do? Usually narrations, you know, just how I'm talking now. But narrations or voiceovers. Yeah. But I've done a few characters, and they're fun to do. But I really don't get a lot of those. Uh, I enjoy them when I get them, though. But you know, whatever comes, yeah, I'm happy with. <laughs> well, it, it takes time. It takes time, and eventually, it sort of opens up. Um, one of my one of my good friends uh, that I worked with years ago, Larry Kenny, who is uh, uh, an excellent voice actor said that there are stages of, of being a, uh, doing voiceovers. There's one where you come into the business and they, uh, they, they want you to sound like something else. And then you, you're you working along and they say, well, can you sound like so-and-so, you know, and uh, we're looking for this and that. And, and you, you, you work on that. And then you get to the point where they hire you because you sound a certain way. And so you're the one they hire. And then after a long, after a while, somebody else comes along that this sounds a little different. And they ask you to sound like that, and then it comes back around to, can you come? Can you sound like this? And it's it's just sort of up and down all all through all through the career. Uh, so, you know, if you have versatility in your voice, you do a lot better. Um, and you sound like you probably have a voice that's very versatile. Well, thank you. <laughs> and. Uh... Yeah, I mostly do vo character wise voices are usually lower, you know, low tone. And uh Yeah. I can go high. What made you want to get into it? What well, made you want to get into it? <laughs> well, that's an interesting story. Um I'll tell you the short version of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, as a kid, you know, as a little kid I was always fascinated with voices and comedy and entertainment, you know, on television and radio. Yeah. And as I got older, uh, my curi curiosity got the best of me, and I just kept, I said, well, I'll give it a try, you know, I'll f figure out how to do it, you know, and I found a few radio people. I'm from Louisiana, so I met a few yeah. people in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, that were in radio. And they said, well, you should give it a try because you really have an interesting voice. And uh, so I did, you know, and I auditioned for a few, uh, you know, voiceover projects. And the first audition I didn't get, but the second audition I did get. And uh, it was for something on the Internet, you know. Most of my stuff is on the Internet and stuff. It just yeah. goes all over. And uh, then my radio show, you know, that was interesting because radio was very popular, and it still is popular, of course. Um, when I first started my radio business, I only, I just played music. You know, I was a disc jockey. I did that for two years. Yeah. And uh, after that, I 
started interviewing people because, uh, you know, I was a upcoming actor and voice actor, and I could I could get people who were in the business longer than I was to get their advice, their experiences, and they get to tell how they got started. And that was interesting, you know. And uh, I've been doing the radio show for six years, and I've interviewed, oh, I don't know, probably almost over a hundred people. Wow. Wow, that's good. That's good. <laughs> you enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My, yeah I, I always I enjoyed being on the air, and I enjoyed doing voiceover work, but actually... What I enjoyed probably the most was uh, the behind-the-scenes stuff uh, when I was a program director of radio stations, a uh, program director of WNBC in New York City when mm-hmm. they were still around, mm-hmm. and and that was that gave me a lot of uh, a lot of satisfaction because I was I was working with some some pretty good people. I uh, had a staff that included people like Howard Stern. And, oh wow. Um, Don Imus and and people like that. Um, I don't know if, if you uh, if you'd heard of Wolfman Jack. He was around. Oh, of course. A while back. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, and and he uh, he was on the staff too, and um, an old comedy guy, Soupy Sales. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that that was that was a lot of fun, and I, I did that for a few years. So uh, it, it's given me a lot of satisfaction to to be. Uh, behind the mic and in front of the mic <laughs> and, uh, and like I say I've been blessed I've, I've been blessed with a very very uh, long and satisfying career yeah yeah the voice acting industry that you know the entertainment industry in its whole you know it's very interesting and it's not for everybody I don't think you know you have to know what you're getting into uh you know you have to have a thick skin because rejection oh, you yeah. know <laughs> that, yeah yeah that that probably was the, the has been the, the toughest thing for me over the years is that i don't i don't like hearing no uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you you hear a lot of no's oh yeah my next question to you is do you have any upcoming projects in voiceover do you have anything upcoming you can share uh nothing right now i I just sort of take as it comes people will uh send me things Uh, clients will send me things to uh, to work on i you know i i have done uh uh, done stuff for radio stations to um you know the the, um little voiceovers and, and things for that you know for their promos and things like that so it's it's basically you know sitting out here in the jungle uh when the phone rings i i uh, go down to the you know I, I wait for them to send me the script i go down to the the booth and uh, record it and send it out and and that's believe me that's a lot easier than it used to be mm-hmm. because it, it used to be when you had when you were recording you had to go to a studio to do it you know now you can you know send this stuff through the internet to anywhere in the world Oh yeah, and it's it's just amazing, and I, I love electronic editing. Uh, I'm I start when I started off, they were you know editing tape with a razor blade, and you know I was pretty good at that. But uh, the electronic editing is much easier. I, I know there are people my age that that hate all of the new uh, uh, the new innovations and stuff, but I love it. That stuff is great. It sure makes it a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, the internet has really made the radio business the yeah it's really been a good thing but sometimes the internet can be a bad thing but yeah, you got to focus on the good things well you know it's it's you know probably been been good for you because you know how would you be able to to reach all of the people you reach if it was if it wasn't for the internet you know you you wouldn't you you you'd be stuck with having to to do it through uh, a local radio station or something like that. Oh, yeah. Now you can reach anybody in the world. <laughs> yeah, my show reaches, gee, someone told me my show reaches Canada and England, you know, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> That's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My next question to you is, and I know we talked a little bit about this, but 
Do you have any uh, other pieces of advice for people who...